without a doubt, one of the most compelling proofs of the reliability of Scripture is prophecy. One of the many remarkable Old Testament prophecies dealt with ancient Tyre, which is today in southern Lebanon. Somewhere between the years 592 and 570 B.C., the prophet Ezekiel predicted that several very specific calamities would fall on this once major city, ultimately including its utter destruction. The fulfillment came over a period of 1,861 years when finally, in 1291 A.D., Tyre ceased to exist. Today, a much smaller, relatively insignificant city has grown up nearby in sight of the remains of this once proud city which lies in ruins, only a shell of what it once was. Interestingly, each of Ezekiel's prophecies were fulfilled in the minutest detail. The odds of them being fulfilled coincidentally are one in 75 million. Between the years 783 and 586, both Isaiah and Jeremiah prophesied the devastation and extinction of ancient Babylon, the ruins of which are in modern-day Iraq. The probability of each prophecy coming to pass, coincidentally, is 1 in 5 times 10 to the ninth power. That's 1 in 50 billion. Probably the most remarkable prophecies are the 300-plus Old Testament prophecies that speak of the Hebrew Messiah, Jesus Christ, his ancestors, his virgin birth, believed not only by Christians but by Muslims as well, his place of birth, his pre-existence, the piercing of his hands and feet in crucifixion, an unnatural midday darkness as he hung on the cross, his miraculous resurrection, these and hundreds more prophecies, clearly beyond human control, were fulfilled by Jesus Christ exactly as predicted. Remarkably, all of these prophecies were made before 430 B.C., which marks the close of the Hebrew Old Testament. Given the reality that fulfilled prophecies are by their very nature supernatural, critics refuse to accept the dating of most prophecies. With no solid evidence to support their claims, they choose to late date Old Testament prophecies. For example, if a prophecy known to have been made by Isaiah in roughly 700 B.C. was historically fulfilled in 500 B.C., they would turn the prophecy into history insisting that Isaiah spoke the prophecy in 500 B.C. Unfortunately for the critics, they can, if they choose, ignore the evidence and late date many Old Testament prophecies to avoid the supernatural implications. They cannot, however, late date the prophecies of Jesus. For it is a known fact that the Old Testament was translated into Greek by the year 246 B.C., and what is called the Septuagint. Even by late dating, at the very least, Old Testament prophecies pointing to Jesus had to have been given 246 years prior to their fulfillment. Now, what are the odds of Jesus accidentally fulfilling, say, eight of the 300 plus prophecies? Peter Stoner, Professor Emeritus of Science at Westmont College has calculated the probability to be 10 to the 17th power. That's 10 followed by 17 zeros. To illustrate how large 10 to the 17th power is, Stoner gave this illustration. Imagine covering the entire state of Texas with silver dollars to a depth of two feet deep. The total number of silver dollars needed to cover the whole state would be 10 to the 17th power. Now, choose just one of those silver dollars, mark it, and drop it from an airplane. Thoroughly stir all the silver dollars all over the state. When this has been done, blindfold one man. Tell him he can travel wherever he wishes in the state of Texas. Tell him that somewhere along the way he must stop, reach down into the two feet of silver dollars, and try to pull up the one specific silver dollar that has been marked. What do you think his chances are? Well, the chance of 
finding this one silver dollar in the state of Texas is the same as the odds of Jesus fulfilling eight of the Old Testament prophecies that spoke of him. Ten to the seventeenth power. That's ten followed by seventeen zeros. And Jesus fulfilled not only eight very specific prophecies, he fulfilled over three hundred. Clearly, prophecy is but another proof that scriptures are, as they claim to be, inspired and inerrant. Oh.